it's Chinese food day today and I'm making a Chinese food video and I got some lovely Chinese food I just have to unwrap it they wrap in cellophane like this so it doesn't get too sloppy so I'm just gonna peel this off Cellophane is a challenge all the time. And I got some prawns, deep fried prawns. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a little trick here. I'm gonna go like that. one of those places where you show your card and you accumulate points and the lady said would you like to uh, pay with this using your points I said sure I'm in so there we go so the first time I even heard about Chinese food I was probably about four years old and we were camping at a uh, at a campground and my brother was there he was about well, he's 13 years older he's passed away now but he was about 17 at the time and um, he had some chow mein in a can, you know, canned chow mein. And um, we were in this little travel trailer. Not sure where my parents went, but they took off for the day. It was just him and me in this little travel trailer. And he was eating, and I was just sitting there watching him. I, you know, and that's my first uh, exposure to, uh, to Chinese food. No, we lived in it. Chinese food restaurant for 100 miles. Well, actually, a lot of the small towns had stores that were run by Chinese people, but or restaurants, but they didn't always serve Chinese food. So, when we moved to Saskatoon when I was five, that was in uh, '62. Wow, this looks amazing. sister who's about 10 years older than me we moved to Saskatoon she was still going to school in grade 10 and that's uh, so she's probably about 16 and I was you know uh, you know six and she ordered some Chinese food from Toon's kitchen
know, she gave me some chow mein and stuff like that. And, and she says, it's like spaghetti. And I started eating. I, didn't, I thought it was great. You know, you know, my brother and I were like two peas in a pod. We'd eat anything. Always had a good appetite. Still do. Then my sister said, come on, try a shrimp. thing I noticed was, you know, the batter and the, the uh, I, I could taste the seafood. Now, I was used to eating a lot of lake fish. So I was used to, you know, that type of flavor, like a fish flavor. But this was richer. Moving to Saskatoon opened up a lot of doors as far as restaurants were concerned, and that's, you know, the culture, whatever. Now my mom, apparently, according to her, didn't like Chinese food initially. Must have been before my time, because as far back as I remember, she always liked Chinese food. that she wasn't familiar with, you know, she liked her meat and potatoes. I remember she tried a quesadilla for the first time less than 20 years ago. She thought because it was new to her that it was some new invention or something. And she loved it. But she told me she didn't think she liked Chinese food because it just wasn't something she recognized. And she loved it. She had a sister whose husband wouldn't eat Chinese food because he thought that when they clear the tables, if there's anything left over, they'd just put it back and serve it again, which is, I don't know why we would think that, but I'm not sure if he ever did uh, try Chinese food. I know he, he passed away years ago, so if he didn't, he missed out. inside their lobby. Oh, look at that. It's delicious. Mm. 
very cold. Pretty big restaurant. May 4, left hand side was a restaurant. They also had a counter. Booths. Right hand side, same thing. At the back was like a nightclub. It was kind of wide open, so when you're eating there, you always hear the music. sister who was three years older and she didn't like Chinese food. Of course that would change when she tasted it but at the time she didn't like Chinese food either. So we'd go to the smorg and my parents would find her a, a seat at the counter upstairs at the restaurant. Golden Dragon and the Merry Gold Rover. 
very good restaurants. Of course, there's more than three restaurants, but like I said earlier, those are the three they frequented the most. And those are the three I remember. We moved away in June, 74, as soon as school was out. Just before that, it could have been April, May, June, whatever, I can't remember, but I was working. And this one night I was catching the bus on the number six bus. And um, I stopped in the Marigold and I bought a bag of fortune cookies. mistakes in my life. I've done a lot of things I'm not proud of. Things I'm embarrassed about. You know, I've got, I've got regrets like anybody else. But, you know, I moved on. I got over it. But for some reason, this is no joke. When I left those cookies, on the bus in 1974. To this day, that still bothers me. I don't know. I don't know why. It just bugs me. I guess because it was a brand new bag. I had like maybe five. I thought I'd have them for like a few days. Share them with the family. starving individual found them, but I'm 
That's where they ended up with the garbage. in the older part of Nanaimo, the city I live in, and um, yeah, people would drive from out of town to have uh, dinner there. Um, they'd come from all parts of the city just to eat there because it was so good. Not the thing about that restaurant. Aside from serving excellent Chinese food, they sold hamburgers, hamburgers and fries. Walked 
again. They had all these booths, like an old style restaurant. But just to your left, you can walk the store. We always had these curtains hanging there and walk through. There was a beautiful dining room. I ate there a few times. My dad had his 65th birthday there. It was okay. Not great, but it was okay. I don't know why anybody would open a restaurant across the street from some place like the Red Lantern. Now I've heard it said that. already done all its uh, its homework and all its marketing and all that, right? And all its demographics, they, they've got all that, so they know it's going to be a good location. But the Madrid House was there for a few years, but didn't compare to Wheeze. Now, less than a mile down the street, a place called the Mayflower. The Mayflower is very good too. Excellent, I would say. A lot of people said it was the best. It was very good. business, I think. I found out later. I didn't know this. My nephew got a job there driving, like delivery. When he was about 16, I didn't know that too recently. He's about to his 50s now. Was interesting. It was not one of these restaurants. Never had a buffet. Never had a smorg at all. No. Something very. Big. 
bizarre happened to the Red Lantern. inspecting their fridges and freezers, which are at the back of the restaurant. Now the owners of the restaurant had a two-story apartment at the back attached to the restaurant. That's where they lived. Now, the health inspector their own personal fridge that was not a fridge that they uh, used for the restaurant that was their own personal fridge and the cat meat was for their own personal consumption somehow this story wound up in the newspaper just explain to you. They never ever served the meat, never would have, never did. It was for their own consumption. According to them, they ate that kind of stuff back in China. Wow, word got out. eventually the Red Lantern the Mayflower not the little restaurant I can't remember the name of the little takeout one they all folded you know what I mean like I said the people who ran the uh, Red Lantern way past retirement age and still running it so they finally decided it was probably time to enjoy life and pack it in so they did that the matter now stayed around for a while changed hands changed names eventually just disappeared other restaurants. 
as I mentioned, ever had a smorg. And smorgs are becoming more and more popular. The Hong Kong house, their smorg sport is unbelievable. I've never seen one that big in my whole life. Unbelievable. Now they've been open for a while before I ever went there. The first time I went there was in 19, no, 2006. My mom's 80th birthday. His dad had his birthday there one time. It was kind of cool because um, it was kind of nice when Linda and I started going out. It was nice to know our family really liked Chinese food as well. Because I always enjoy it. other restaurants around too. This, I went online and, and googled how many restaurants were in town and there's more than I, I realized. You know, they kind of pop up, disappear and pop up. But also Thai food and Vietnamese food and Korean food is becoming more and more popular all the time. That may have kind of helped out, helped the edge out of a lot of places like the Red Lantern or the Mayflower, those places. Maybe. <laughs> now, if you asked me, which is my favorite? Shanghai City and Hong Kong House. I always said Hong Kong House, but Shanghai. I haven't eaten there a few times and then hadn't eaten there for a while. And we got a gift gift card for Christmas from my sister once, the one that didn't like Chinese food. And she gave us a gift card to me and Linda, so we went there about five years ago, six years ago, for the first time in a long time. And it was really good. And it was funny because when I remember when I said when I was a kid I couldn't tell one Chinese restaurant apart from the other I think the food all tastes the same it does taste different they have just different flavors and stuff you know and, you know it was, it was nice it was very refreshing their smorgs not quite as big excuse me pardon me their, their smorgs not quite as big but you know you pile so much on your plate half a notch better but the food at both places is very good I think the surface at Shanghai is a little bit better more attentive uh, I would probably give them equal marks mind you the only thing that kind of bugged me was last Father's Day my son and daughter wanted to take me to uh, Shanghai for Chinese food. Got there about 6 30 and wasn't very many people. And they weren't even replenishing a lot of their, their steam table stuff, you know. If it got there any later, it probably missed out altogether.
years ago, another restaurant opened up, and they're a smorgasbord as well. And they're a local franchise. They have, um, or maybe they're not even a franchise, but they have uh, a few locations in different cities, close by different towns. I think there's about five of them. <clears throat> so they may not be a franchise, but they have more than one location. They're called the Driftwood. Not to me, the Driftwood sounds more like a surf and turf place or maybe more like a cheap motel or something. It doesn't really sound like a Chinese food place. So they've been open for a little while, so Linda and I decided to give them a whirl. So we went there. And there was this um, two restaurants side by side, both at the same type of farm. Um, they're both built at the same time, big square buildings, very ornate, very nice. One is called Montana's, which is like a, a real meat place, carnivore type place. Steaks, ribs, chicken, burgers. Uh, and there's another place called Kelsey's, but they folded years ago. And um, I can see why I was, I was kind of overrated, not that great, but they took over that building, completely cut at the inside and took over. And um, so now that's what they have, their smorg. And when you walk in, it's not really, it's very clean and neat and tidy. Not a whole lot of uh, ambiance or atmosphere, but still, they got the smorg laid out. The food is very good. It's, what I really liked was it was different than anything else I'd ever seen. They had stuff I'd never even seen before. And that was refreshing. small chain of stores locally called quality food oops I gotta quit banging that mic I thought I had the local one on the bags but I guess not but quality foods is a grocery store and um Cube dash browns are grated, whatever, coffee. And then, of course, 
because that was it was like that for a long time until COVID. Then they shut down for COVID. Now it's I think it's seven ninety nine. I don't know why it went up, but well, everything goes up. I shouldn't ask why. But even still, eight dollars for a full breakfast like that, you can't get that at McDonald's. It's really good. It's a very good store. And so that's where I got my my food. I got I use my points card. Another, there was another restaurant down when I forgot to mention this one. I mentioned Red Lantern, Mandarin House, Mayflower, and that one up the street, that name I couldn't remember. But there's also one called the Double Dragon. My mom had a retirement party there. The Double Dragon. Yeah, I forgot about that one. opened in town just recently and I love this place I've been there twice I love it it's like a dream come true it's an Italian Korean fusion restaurant wow very good sit here and keep on eating. But if you have any um any shout outs, any comments, please leave your comments. I read them all. Respond to all of them. May come a time when I have to hire a secretary or something, but right now I respond to all my comments. I appreciate hearing from you. Want a shout out? Hit me up. I'll give you a shout out. In the meantime, you look after yourselves, look after each other. I love you all. I'm just gonna sit here and keep on eating.